In the not too distant future, a mutated strain of rabies called mad dog disease swiftly moves from animals to people. A bitten person can become rabid in 90 seconds, which means that over 7 billion people will soon be dead or sick. Individuals that turn into zombies exhibit hyperviolence and a very high pain threshold, which indicates a desire to murder. After the end of the world, zombie hordes that are violent become the norm. The military has assembled all of the healthy survivors they could find in an underground nuclear installation. In an effort to conduct tests and discover a treatment, the soldiers have also partnered with scientists from the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention. But before they can accomplish that, they have to locate patient zero because their blood contains the solution. They frequently question a group of zombies that are kept in cages to find out when it all began. Despite being bitten and becoming infected, Morgan is a citizen who did not change. They haven't been able to create a vaccine using his blood, even though it appears to be immune to the virus. Since that bite gave him the ability to comprehend and interact with zombies, Morgan has joined Dr. Gina's team to aid in the research. A furious zombie is brought in by the troops and is strapped to a chair inside a glass cell for questioning. The first step in the process is to play some music, which hurts zombies. The afflicted man writhes in agony on the chair, trying in vain to free himself from the restraints. After the zombie has endured enough, Morgan switches off the music and speaks to him in the language of growls using a tablet to relay messages to Gina. Morgan discovers that the man, whom he has nicknamed Joe, is from Minnesota, and was among the first few to become infected. In an attempt to get Joe to talk more, Morgan tries to relate to him by revealing that on sometimes, he too gets strong cravings. He then talks about what's left of the world, claiming to detest it, just as much as the zombies do. Joe loses his temper again, and at that point Colonel Knox interrupts the questioning with a microphone. Exasperated, Morgan retreats from the glass cell to allow Joe some time Time to collect himself. Knox, on the other hand, believes that this delay is needless and encourages Morgan to carry on with the questioning. Knox becomes so enraged with Joe's increasing craziness in the jail that he shoots him out of frustration. Joe might have given more hints, which infuriates Gina and Morgan right away. Gina also threatens to remove Knox from his position of authority if he misuses his power in her lab ever again. Morgan punches the cell, demonstrating that he does, in fact, have certain violent impulses that he has to control every day. Morgan then seeks solace by hiding in the restroom. When Gina eventually locates him and offers to console her, Morgan takes advantage of the opportunity to vent about the circumstances and the strain he's under. Additionally, Gina offers Morgan some medication. But he declines and says he's been experiencing nightmares about his wife, who was also bitten. They both acknowledge that they long for the easy life and frequently wind up becoming messy in the restroom. A few minutes afterward, Gina accuses Knox of being envious and tells him he would never have a chance with her after he makes fun of her for her closeness with Morgan and watches them leave the toilet. Morgan visits a very particular cell at the back as he makes his way to the subterranean cells in the meanwhile. As it happens, his wife Janet, who was bitten on the same day as him, is the zombie there. Though it doesn't heal her, Morgan gives him an injection of a serum made from his blood, which at least slows down the illness and keeps her conscious. Janet smashes it away at first, but when Morgan begs her to help, she gives in and claims she still remembers the music. The zombie known as Pete is brought to the cell by the troops the following day. He struggles against the restraints as they prepare to tie him to the chair, escaping to assault the soldiers right away. Dr. Scooter rushes into the cell to help as the men try to keep him down, only to have his arm bitten in the process. As soon as possible, the team brings Scooter to the hospital, where he begs them not to let him change. Just before the 90 seconds expire, Gina chops off Scooter's arm after giving him the serum injection. Everyone rejoices and it appears like everything is well for Scooter at first, but then he falls into shock, and the group has to move quickly to tie him down before he changes. When others become irate, Knox shoots him down and claims that's what Scooter wanted. Scooter sits up growling since they aren't moving quickly enough. All Morgan and Gina can do is concede that he is correct. Knox gets wasted in the restroom later on when the troops are cleaning the cell. Gina experiences a private breakdown, but Morgan discovers her and helps her get through it. After that, they pay a visit to Scooter's son's memorial and leave him a small cupcake on his birthday. They attempt to question Pete once more the next day. Due to his grief over Scooter's passing, Morgan continues to torment Pete for longer than normal, occasionally turning the music on and off to play pranks on him. Peter says he's from Minnesota and that he became infected in October when the inquiries eventually begin, but he won't elaborate. Growing more enraged, Morgan loses it and points his rifle at Pete, who remains silent, and simply orders him to do it. Morgan gives up and walks out of the cell. Later, 
at a meeting with General Pierce, Gina and Morgan reveal that Joe and Pete were both contaminated in Minnesota by a very early group. Given the likelihood that patient zero may be in Minnesota, Gina wants to broaden the search, knocks objects to the proposal right away, claiming that it will only result in more men being lost, but Gina doesn't stop talking demonstrating how the zombies have developed into a more cunning and dangerous species, and highlighting their cunning attacks. Morgan also tells them that there is no lying to zombies. Ultimately, General Pierce gives the go-ahead for a search in Minnesota. Morgan gives Janet another injection following their meeting. Janet notices that Morgan is feeling conflicted about her and Gina as they converse but Morgan maintains that Janet is his everything. Janet loses her mind and screams to be let out, stating that she would rather be outside than secure in a hellhole. Additionally, she talks about how much she has in common with human feelings, such as crying. Morgan holds her hand and encourages her to not give up because the injections would help. Morgan keeps seeing flashbacks of his former life with Janet during this time. Janet wanted to wait to locate the ideal surrogate, despite his persistent insistence that he needed a child. Even with their own code to express their love for one one another. The couple was still quite happy together. Subsequently, Gina draws blood from Morgan once more, while becoming enraged over their inability to determine why he is the only one immune. She's tried a few remedies on the rats, but thus far none of them have worked, and the rats continue to murder one another. Although the effects of Morgan's resistant blood are temporary, they can lower the body's viral load, limit the spread of infection, and lessen aggression. Since they haven't received a vaccination yet, Gina informs Morgan that Janet's recovery isn't assured, which upsets Morgan. Gina decides to tell him she loves him at that point, but Morgan simply walks out of the room. Morgan has a dream about the incident night later that night. After stopping at a set of traffic lights while driving across the city with Janet, two zombies attack their vehicle and smash the glass. Morgan continued to drive until the zombies dropped, but as soon as the car came to a stop, additional zombies jumped on it and peered through the windows, biting the two of them. Morgan screams as he awakens from the nightmare in the present. After a while, Gina finds out she's expecting Morgan's child. She has no hope that Morgan will feel the same way, so she can't help but break down. Knox and his men carry the dead soldiers from the search operation to be cremated in the meantime. As the soldiers prepare to transport the bodies after paying their respects, a dead man unexpectedly comes to life and launches an attack. As it turns out, he's a zombie from the civilian world who cosplayed a soldier to sneak into the base. Knox sneaks around to grab a gun, while the thing kills the medics and troops one by one without remorse, waiting for the ideal opportunity to attack. As soon as more soldiers hear the alarm ringing throughout the laboratories, they race to the crematorium where Knox is looking for the enemy that retreated into hiding. When a teammate who has undergone transformation jumps on him, Knox shoots him quickly before he can continue. The zombie that had invaded the area bursts out at that precise moment and tries to bite Knox, but Morgan enters to drag the thing back. Morgan requests that the troops leave him alive so that he can be questioned, even though they want to shoot him. Subsequently, Knox aims his firearm towards the infected, who startle them by promptly yielding and requesting an audience with Morgan. The person isn't disturbed even when the zombie is brought to a glass cell and music is played. Actually, all he does is sit there and light a cigarette. Nobody would be able to tell he is isn't human if it weren't for his unusually colored eyes. Because the soldiers discovered a campus ID on him, Morgan gives him the moniker Professor. The professor is questioned, but he doesn't seem scared and responds with nebulous philosophical statements. He acknowledges that he has been searching for Morgan, who is reportedly well-liked among zombies. When Morgan questions why the music has no effect on him, the professor responds that every zombie is different, just like every human, and that Morgan's capacity to communicate with zombies is a particular kind of infection uniqueness. Morgan takes exception at this and maintains he is not a zombie. The professor adds that zombies, who annihilate whenever they feel like it, are a more advanced species than humans. He then describes how he became infected. That day, he was giving a lecture at the university. He went to the hallway to answer his wife's calls, since she kept phoning. When the professor turned to investigate, he saw a swarm of zombies invading the room and attacking everyone. This came happened after his wife alerted him to the chaos engulfing the city. When the infected students rushed on the professor and started biting him, he was unable to escape and zombies started to flood out of the hallways. His body transformed, but he was still able to return.
return home because his thinking was still clear. But the virus made him feel angry inside the moment he saw his wife and daughter, so he had to eat them both. Disturbed by the tale, Morgan confronts the professor for his lack of restraint, but he just reiterates that zombies have beyond human bounds. He dismisses the queries to continue his tirade against the government and the system, because he doesn't believe that there is such a thing as a patient zero. Morgan eventually loses it and punches him before storming out of the cell. Morgan returns to the cell and, after pausing to collect himself, takes a cigarette while feigning amity. The professor makes fun of him by inquiring about Janet and claiming that zombies are the answer to human sickness, thus she doesn't require a treatment. As the philosophical digression goes on, Morgan comes to the conclusion that the professor is purposefully wasting his time. He scans the zombies with a device out of suspicion, and when he discovers nothing, he dashes to the cells. When he locates Pete, he offers his theory. Pete was purposefully taken as part of a scheme. Pete attempts to self-delete and passes out as he understands that Morgan will harm him in order to get him to talk. After using the scanner once more and receiving a signal, Morgan exposes a scar on Pete's torso to reveal a hidden tracker. It appears that his theory is correct. Pete intentionally allowed soldiers to capture him in order for the other zombies to locate the base, indicating that they are growing more intelligent and preparing an attack. After Morgan alerts Pierce about the impending threat, Pierce declares the base to be completely under lockdown. Sadly, the zombies manage to breach the entrances before they can complete their security, and a merciless onslaught of attacks on the refugees quickly results in a carnage. The army grows even larger when a creature enters the cell area covertly and frees every prisoner. The troops attempt to open fire, but their numbers are insufficient and the zombies continue to advance, murdering everyone in their path. As soon as the horde bursts through the tunnels and the labs are overrun, everyone flees in fear, and more individuals are slain. As the zombies pursue them, Knox shows Gina a way out safely, while Pierce tries to follow them, but Knox shoots Pierce down, sparing the zombies from feasting on him and allowing him time to flee in the elevator with Gina. Gina is appalled by Knox's actions and calls him out for what he calls a necessary sacrifice for survival. Gina grabs his revolver out of anger and stops the elevator. Since her research is their only hope she wants to return to the lab to get her samples, but Knox tries to stop her. Knox is killed when the gun unintentionally fires during the scuffle. A scientist seeks cover in the rat lab, as the carnage rages on throughout the complex, but a zombie soon tracks her down and strikes, destroying the cages in the process. The diseased rats are now also at large. Morgan rushes to the prisons in the meantime in order to liberate Janet, and they flee together. Morgan picks up a fire axe en route, and when they finally run across Gina, she questions the wisdom of releasing Janet, given that the injections were just temporary. But Morgan won't go anywhere without her. A zombie suddenly materializes behind them, but Gina shoots it down right away and declares she's going the professor roars loudly at the same moment and soon after, other zombies arrive to save him. Returning to the trio, they cautiously avoid a few hazardous cables as they ascend into the vents. As they make their way out, Gina looks through the grates to the refugee camp and is shocked to see a full-scale massacre. The grating falls due to their weight, revealing their location to the zombies. A zombie rat jumps out at the group as they attempt to continue forward, blocking their route. Janet swiftly snatches the rat and uses her bare hands to kill it, then they find out that the zombies are also beginning to make their way via the vents. Morgan has to kick a zombie until the vent bursts, bringing the creature to the ground as the squad rushes forward. Morgan is dangerously close to falling, but Gina saves him in time. They eventually arrive at the parking lot where the professor is expecting them. He refers to Morgan as the zombie's equivalent of a patient zero and says he came to the base to kill him because his blood may stop the zombies from existing in the future. The women attempt to intervene as Morgan and the professor get into a fight, but the professor easily overcomes them both. Morgan is knocked down by professor using everything in the room as the men battle, but Morgan gets back up fast and pushes Professor back, so he can impale him on a pipe. In the process, Morgan sustains injuries as well, and the professor roars once more to call forth a massive horde before passing away. The three of them begin sprinting, but Janet says she's going to wait behind to slow down the throng as they approach the door. When Morgan declines, Janet exploits Gina's pregnancy to divert his attention before locking the door. Morgan and Gina take a moment to grieve for their late wife before making their way out of the woods via an emergency tunnel. Despite the large number of zombies in the area, Morgan is confident they will survive. The couple climbs on his concealed bike and speeds through the woodland while zombies start hunting them from a distance. 